Andrea Aschio with I'm Danielle. Apologetic, biblical issues, comparative, and more. And now, the question. Friends, brothers, and sisters, welcome to this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the subscribers, the new ones. You are most welcome to this uh, thought-provoking, I would say, uh, episodes I'm creating. I'm working hard to make the complicated matters uh, simple and expose the Pharisees. The question about Abraham Richmond embracing Islam, that is, is that true? That could be yes. The question about 100,000 Christians embracing Islam with him, that is big fallacies. No, it is like a tornado in a cup or just like they want you to swim in a cup of water. Can you swim in a cup of water? This is what they, the illusion about it is like an invitation to swim in a cup of water. The other question about Christlam, was it necessary movement in Lagos, Nigeria and spreading throughout Nigeria and other places under different other names? Let us watch this. Sectarian violence has led to thousands of deaths over the years. Last November, such conflict in the city of Jos, often based on land disputes, claimed more than 300 lives. But practitioners of so-called Chrislam, 1500 on some Sundays, see no religious fault line. Shamsuddin Saka, he's called Prophet, says they are all children of Abraham. Abraham has many children. Abraham is the father of Christianity and the father of Islam. Why are the Christian and Muslim fighting? From this, my friends, you understand why Christlam in Nigeria, the fighting, the killing, the unnecessary atrocities between communities, mainly, I would say, the Muslim aggressions against Christians. Muslims have Christophobia. They cannot see Christians prospering and living in peace. That is the sad truth about it. And Christlam is emerging between the two uh, religions, if we call Christianity a religion. Christianity is not a religion, it is a way of life that is following the steps of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So bringing the traditions, the practices of Muslims and Christians in under one roof together, we can work in so many areas together. There are so many social necessities to work together. In my street, I could work with the Muslim and Hindus and Buddhist and every other person in harmony for the safety of our street, for the safety of our homes and families uh, together. So many other areas we can work together, but not to worship. I had a dream. I was sleeping. And I'm hearing this voice. I was sleeping in the church. It's a small room, a small piece of room. Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters. As you will all be aware, it is the time of the holy pilgrimage of Hajj and I saw a very special story trending on Twitter regarding a former Christian priest named Ibrahim Richmond who reverted to Islam after having continuous dreams telling him to do so. What is particularly beautiful about this story is he converted his 100,000 strong Christian church congregation to Muslim also and was rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the Saudi government taking notice and funding his Hajj pilgrimage. Some of you haven't heard about it except in my previous video. Some have heard a lot through the social media. But is it true what this lady is saying? That he brought with him 100,000 strong Christians. Not any Christian. 100,000 strong Christians. Can you believe that? Listen to it again is he converted his 100,000 strong Christian church congregation to Muslim also. So he was rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the Saudi government to perform Hajj at the age of two months in Islam, after two months in the allegedly embraced Islam, and brought with him 100,000 strong Christians. I challenge the Muslims. I challenge everybody to convert a church of 15 
only, only of 15 members, convert them all into Islam. Any Christian church we have, I challenge our Muslim friends, every other person, if you can convert those congregation of 15 person, only small, very small church, into Islam. There is no way, this will not happen. Um, convert myself out of Islam to Christ. I'm proud to be a Christian and I'm proud to suffer for the sake of Christ. I have plenty of hardship I passed through in my early Christian life because of the Lord Jesus Christ, because of this faith. And I'm still enduring some hardship, even by the Christians, inevitably. And for Muslims, Many would like to see me extend from this world. Yet I persevere. There is no temptation. There is no financial temptation. Nothing at all will tempt one like me to revert to Islam, to go back to Islam, to embrace this religion that I have left because I know what is Islam. And miraculously, I would say, my friends, I would say to the Christians and Muslims, I do love the Muslims. I left Islam because of the flaws I know in the religion, but I love the Muslims despite my vast knowledge, I would say over uh, 70 years. Now let us watch this again, how many strong Christians came to Islam. Is he converted his 100,000 strong Christian church congregation to Muslim also? My children is number one out of my family. They finish college, they working. None of my family, they, didn't, they never go to college. So I'm just grateful God make me be the number one family, help, me, help my children, help my family back home too. If I don't make it that much, I still support my family, my brother, my mother in Africa. Uh, it's important to me because you give me peace of mind. So Ibrahim embraced Islam and they got the benefit, he and his family, family members, they got the benefit. So in Islam, they are called Mu'allaf, so he became Mu'allaf. I will explain that. It is a concept so many Christians do not understand, so many, even Muslims. He became Mu'allaf of the heart. I will explain it later in this video. Stay with me. الآن هو ذهب حاجا إلى مكة المكرمة ومرافقه بدأ يعني يأخذ به جولة في بعض الأماكن ووصل به إلى جبل النور حيث نزل القرآن عن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أو ما نزل في غار حراء نلاحظ أن بعض تصرفات هذا القسيس حديث عادي الإسلام يستخدم بعض الألفاظ بعض الحركات مثل النصارى He is our light, he is my light, he is the, he is the light of this world let his light shine all over the world and he forgives us all our sins for 15 years now leader of the congregation the Corinthian church of south africa there's got about 100,000 followers until i had a dream i was sleeping and i'm hearing this voice i was sleeping in the church it's a small room a small piece of room then i had this voice he says, tell your men to wear white kutas. Kutas. So our friends Ibrahim came to Islam through a dream. I don't despise people seeing dreams. And the commentator was telling that because he is still new to Islam, he uses some of the Christian uh, expressions, vocabularies. Uh, this is a reality. This is a reality of people from the Corinthian church 
in South Africa. They mix the two together. They don't mind the Christian uh, expressions in worship and they adhere strongly to the Islamic teaching and expressions. So it's not big change for the man at all. Let us continue. Tell your men to wear white kurtas. Kurtas. What is a dream? Tell your man to wear white kapas or kultas. Tell your man to wear something like that. When we look at them, we see they already have white cap on their head. Majority. He doesn't in this video, so he did not follow the dream. Is that all? That is all. That is all. The dream that he should tell his men to wear something white on their head. That was amazing conversion. Very persuasive. If I had such dream, just tell your man to wear white kapas. Wow! That is enough to convert a hundred thousand strong Christians to Islam. No proof of it at all. People come to the Christian faith, for instance, for reason. They search. They may have dreams. Some would have dreams of the Lord Jesus Christ coming to them. Uh, some will have experienced healing. There are so many things happening in the Muslim world. Uh, the wind in the house of Islam is blowing. And the Holy Spirit is working in the house of Islam, bringing people to Christ, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They are educated. They will not be taking to the water of baptism before being discipled. This is the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Discipling people, and then you take them to the water. And here we have this Christlamist. Embracing Islam, which is not far from him, nothing unusual for him, what he was doing, and then within two months was taken to Hajj. How much money was spent on him and on his family to become Mu'allaf, which I will explain soon now. Let us think of St. Paul. When he was brought before King Agrippa, and what is the dialogue? How the Christians have a dialogue concerning the faith. No one would embrace the faith easily. To the extent St. Paul was nearly convincing King Agrippa to become a Christian. That was through the prophets, through what is written in the scriptures, at the hand of all of them, King Agrippa knows the scripture, he knows the, about the prophets, as we can see, and St. Paul brought him through this. In the book of Acts, chapter 26, from verse 1, So Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul held out his hand and began his defense. Verse 22, I hope you will read the whole chapter and chapter before it as well. I have experienced help from God to this day, and so I stand testifying to both small and great, saying nothing except what the prophets and Moses said was going to happen. Verse 23, that the Christ was to suffer and be the first to rise from the dead, to proclaim light to our people and to the Gentiles. Verse 27. Do you believe that prophets, King Agrippa? I know that you believe. Verse 28. Agrippa said to Paul, In such a short time are you persuading me to become a Christian? <laughs> 